Vim. Vim is more than a text editor. Vim really is a way of life. And the more I've used it, the more I've become kind of proficient with Vim. The more difficult it is to use anything other than Vim. I can't really use any other text editor other than Vim. In fact, I find it difficult to use programs that are not even text editors because you know I'm going to hit the, the Vim key bindings for, for different things. For example, if my email client doesn't allow me to compose my email in Vim, uh, sometimes I find it difficult to do that because I'm hitting the keyboard commands to change word or delete a line or copy and paste and none of that works the way it does in Vim. <laughs> so I find it difficult to use email programs. I find it difficult to use forms on uh, websites. You know, if I'm sending a message to somebody on a web page, I find it difficult to use certain chat clients, uh, IRC chat clients, because I'm constantly wanting to do things the Vim way. I want to navigate with the Vim keys, you know, HJKL. I, I want to, you know, delete with DD and you go go to the top, top of the document with GG. In fact, the other day I was playing a game on Steam and somebody in the Steam chat typed GG for good game and for some reason, I was wondering why this guy was trying to go to the top of the document in Steam. <laughs> so, Vim has really kind of penetrated my life in a pretty big way. So, those of you like me, you're using Vim, maybe you recently discovered Vim, or you've been using Vim for years. Uh, if you're, if you're, you're a Vim user, you really should take a look at a file manager called VIFM. It's become my preferred file manager. VIFM uses all the Vim key bindings. It even has modes just like Vim. I'm going to show you a little bit of what you can do with VIFM today. Also, if you're a Vim user, you really should enable Vim mode. There is a VI mode or a Vim mode in both Bash and ZSH. So enable Vim mode in your shell. Now all of a sudden, the standard Vim commands you're used to work in your shell prompt. For example, in normal mode in the shell, you'll be able to type zero on the keyboard and go to the beginning of the line, or dollar symbol to go to the end of the line, or DD to delete the line you just uh, wrote. So all your standard Vim key bindings work in the shell. So let's get started. And the first thing I want to discuss with you guys is VIFM. VIFM is a file manager, a terminal-based file manager. Uh, it uses all the standard Vim key bindings. It has modes just like Vim, such as visual mode. Uh, I, I, I can already hear some of you folks asking, why in the world would I use a terminal-based file manager? Why wouldn't I just use a graphical file, file manager like Nautilus or Dolphin? And then I hear some other folks going, why would I use a terminal-based file manager when I can just do everything in the shell? You know, change directory and make files, delete files, make directories, delete directories. I don't need a, a, a file manager, a graphical or terminal based file manager to do anything. Well, that's true. You can do everything in the shell, but having a file manager makes some tasks, some complicated tasks, much easier than doing it in the shell because really complicated tasks in the shell are going to require you to use things like grep, set, alt, regular expressions. Or having a file manager makes some of these tasks a little easier. Uh, why a terminal based file manager rather than a graphical file manager? Well, graphical applications are going to be heavier than terminal based applications, heavier on resources. Graphical ap applications, of course, require you to have X on the system. A terminal based application, you could open up in a TTY prompt. You don't even have to have Xorg running or even installed on the system. Graphical applications also expect you to have a keyboard and mouse on hand. I mean, they expect you to input with the mouse sometimes where terminal based applications are often the primary sometimes the only way to input uh, stuff into them is with the keyboard so terminal applications make sense in a lot of situations so this is my desktop let me open up my file manager of choice here oh, there is VIFM VIFM the VI file manager uh, sorry guys I'm in Herb's Luft today, struggling with some of the key bindings for Herb's Luft, but this is VIFM out of the box. Now, VIFM, 
as I told you, uses all the standard Vim key bindings. Right now, I'm in my home directory. Uh, capital G goes to the bottom, the very last file. You know, same as in Vim. Capital G goes to the last line of the document. GG goes to the first line of the document. We can give it a number, say 5G, to go to the fifth line. You know, the fifth. Uh, thing here in the file manager. It does include the uh, dot dot in that. The dot dot of course is an alias for the parent directory. Of course you can copy something with YY for yank. You can delete something DD for delete just like in Vim. Um, you can do bulk rename. Now this is a really neat thing that you can do in a terminal based file manager like VIFM. You can do, also do it in terminal based file managers like Ranger and I think Midnight Commander and I'm sure others. Uh, let me show you. So I have a folder on here somewhere called Scrot for screenshots. Let me enter into that and the, the pictures are not going to look good because they're 5760 by 1080 screen resolution so the previews are really scrunched up. So I'm just going to turn the previews off. No reason to see them because it's, it's not going to look right anyway. But you see I have all of these screenshots and they are named with a timestamp the screen resolution 5760 by 1080 underscore scrot dot ping. What if I wanted to rename all of these files? Well, in a graphical file manager, it would be kind of tedious. You would have to probably do them one at a time. Most graphical file managers, some of the graphical file managers are extensible, but it's kind of hard to figure out how to do that in a graphical file manager. Things like Nautilus, for example. But in something like VIFM, because you know it takes all the, the standard Vim commands. Um, you could go into visual mode right now, so Shift V. And now, as I go down with J, the J is the down key, I am selecting every single file I wanted to uh, select, maybe for a bulk rename. I don't have to J a million times though. Again, capital G goes all the way to the bottom of the document. So now I've selected everything in this directory how do we rename it? Well, C for change, uh, CW, change word. And now it opens up all of those file names in a Vim document. Basically, uh, we have a Vim document here with all the, those file names. And now, because I'm in Vim, it makes it very easy to change these file names. So if I wanted to do a bulk rename here, uh, one thing I could do is I could do visual mode, so Control-V. Control V and Vim get you into a block mode, a block visual mode. And capital G gets me to the bottom of the document here. So all the way to the last line. So it selected lines one through however many file names were here. I think there were about 250 file names. And now if I move over to the right with the L key, the standard Vim navigation keys. And if I wanted to, I could select all of those, that block of text. And then a simple D for delete makes all of that timestamp information go away. Now that would be rather poor renaming since all 250 something files in this directory now are going to be named the same thing 5760 by 1080 underscore scrot dot ping. So let's undo that. That doesn't make sense. But what I could do is let me move over. So if I wanted to I'm gonna keep the timestamp because the timestamp is unique but I don't need the rest of this information. I don't need 5760 by 1080 underscore scrot for sure. So let's control V again to get into the visual block mode. I'm going to capital G again to go all the way to the bottom of the document. And this time I'm going to go in this direction and highlight all of that D to delete. And now we've made those file names a little shorter. I got rid of the superfluous information that I, I don't really care about. I don't care about the screen resolution and I didn't care to have scrot in the name. I know it's a screenshot because the directory that I'm in is called scrot. But we do need some kind of unique name for each screenshot here so I did leave the timestamp. Uh, if I wanted to I could have instead of doing a visual mode I could have just did a quick substitute. So if I undo this so to do that same change except instead of using visual mode just doing a, a command using the substitute command in Vim colon to uh, get into command line mode here in Vim and then percent sign s for substitute and then slash what do we want to substitute well I wanted to substitute fit, underscore 5760 by 1080 underscore scrot I want that information to be substituted with 
nothing. I, 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 won't, I just want it to go away. So and normally you would put some information here and then another slash, but I'm just going to do two slashes with no information. I don't want to replace it with anything. The last thing I want to do is type G at the end uh, to make sure that it changes this everywhere in the document. Hit enter. And there you go. That's how you could do that with substitute, uh, both equally as fast, whether you use uh, visual mode or substitute. Um, so that is a little bit of the power of something like VIFM because, you know, it, it's so Vim-like. All the standard Vim stuff you're used to, such as modes, insert mode, normal mode, and visual mode, and all your commands, delete commands, and copy, and paste, and substitute, they just all work. Now I could write and quit right now because I'm happy with this and that gets me back into VIFM here. If I wanted to go back to my home directory right now I'm in that scrot directory I have a bookmark uh, a leader key H uh, gets me back into my home directory GG gets me back to the top of that directory and of course colon Q gets me out of VIFM completely so that's VIFM if you're not using VIFM and you're a Vim user you really really should check it out it's fantastic the best file manager or none. Now one other thing if you're a Vim user you need to do you need to have VI mode or Vim mode enabled in whatever shell you use. Uh, there are VI modes in Bash and ZSH. I have both Bash and ZSH on my system so I know that they are they exist on those shells and they work work just as expected. I think there's also a VI mode in Fish I think there's a VI mode in the C shell, probably a VI mode in all the standard shells. It's it's kind of a common feature. Most people don't know about it. I don't know why uh, most people don't know about it. But so let me open up a terminal here, and this is the Z shell. So this is ZSH. Let me zoom in, and I am going to show my zshrc file here let's open it up in vim g to get to the bottom of the document because on the last line right here bind key dash v so bind key space dash v uh, basically gets us into vim mode that's all you need to do add that line to your zshrc file and now you have vim mode in zshrc what is vim mode well by default when you open up your terminal you are in insert mode, meaning I can actually type something. This is a line of text, right? <laughs> now, if I hit escape right now, and now try to type something, yeah, ain't, well, I typed I, so <laughs> I've got back into insert mode, but let me escape. Uh, nothing really works. Now, H, J, K, L work because that's the Vim keys, L to move right, H to move left. If I wanted to change word, so how about CW? This is a block of text. Escape to get back into normal mode. Of course, I could delete a word. I could DW. Well, let me get to the beginning of the word, though. So let me move over with the navigation keys, DW. Of course, I could undo with U. I could delete the line with DD. I could P for paste. I could undo and get all of that back to where I was originally. I could zero to get to the beginning of the line. I could dollar sign to get to the end of the line. So that is VI mode and of course I to get me back into insert mode so I can actually continue to type. Alright. So that is VI mode here in ZSH. What about VI mode in Bash? Well let me uh, skip, get back over to Bash. Why can I? Oh, that's because I created this in VI mode. It won't let me let me get back into normal mode. I can't get rid of this line of text, but if I get back into normal mode and DD, <laughs> all right, and now back into insert mode, bash. It's kind of complicated because I don't have anything visually in my prompt telling me when I'm in normal mode and insert mode. All right, so I'm going to switch over to bash here, and now vim.bashrc. Let's check out my bashrc. And capital G to go to the end of the document here in Vim. And the very last line, set space dash O space VI. That enables VI mode in Bash. Colon Q to quit out of Vim. So this is the same. So if I, well, let me clear everything here. So if I, this is a line of text. So by default, of course, when you're in the shell, in the Bash shell, same thing. You're in insert mode. But if I hit escape, now... You know, I am using the Vim navigation keys, H and L, 
pretty much everything else on the keyboard is disabled other than I to in, <laughs> get into insert mode. Uh, so again, O gets me to the beginning of the line. Dollar symbol gets me to the end of the line. All the other stuff works as expected. So I could, you know, DD to delete the line, P to put, uh, move back over here, and I could, you know, change word for new word. <laughs> So that is all I wanted to share with you guys today. It's just I wanted to share with you a little bit of the, the power of Vim and how you can get more out of other applications such as your file manager and your shell such as Bash, ZSH, Fish. By using Vim and by enabling Vim modes if they have such a mode available. Uh, for me, and I know for many of you, Vim has become kind of a way of life. Uh, Vim it's so much more than a text editor. It's not It's not like Emacs. Emacs is almost like an operating system. It does so much stuff. I mean, you can play games in Emacs. <laughs> uh, Vim it doesn't take it to that level, but certainly Vim, again, it's, it's kind of a way of life, and the more you get into Vim, the harder it is to do things that don't involve the Vim key bindings. So uh, I'm going to keep doing this with any program I can. I, I, I want to navigate with the Vim keys. I want DD to delete and P to paste. I, I want, want nothing but Vim key bindings in all my programs. This show was made possible by Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Douglas, Dylan, Leo, Rob, Robert, and Tony. They are the producers of the show. They are my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without them, this show would not be possible. Show was also brought to you by all those fine ladies and gentlemen. You guys see those names on the screen that help support my work over on Patreon. I want to thank each and every one of those guys. If you'd like to support my work, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.